No, and you keep saying this. You're like, well, this doesn't make sense. You know, it's a, but you're putting that together at the same time, reading body language. There's a lot going on. Yeah, no, you, I agree. You watch a video three times. You know, I've had agencies from around the country send me videos. Hey, can you take a look at this? I'm not watching the video once. I'm not watching it twice. I watch that thing 10 times, you know, like, because I want to fucking make sure. Did I miss anything the first couple of times I watch it? Because you're not a robot. I'm not a robot. Nobody's a robot. Where we're just going ding, 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 ding. All these indicators, all this data to bring. You're going to miss things. One of them, one time. I'm Kenny Williams. I teach interdiction mastermind with Street Cap Training, and I'm here with uh, Sean Grogan. He's going to come out of the closet today about some of his emotional feelings. I'm just joking. We're going to actually talk about some of his rapid assessment on body language and, and micro expressions during his career. I'm Sean Grogan. I instruct unmasking hidden facial expressions, body language for law enforcement, and recognizing pre attack indicators. So let's talk about your early career and how long into your career did you start seeing these or hearing these or, or observing these and knowing what you're looking at? You know, when you start out, you everybody picks up on the, the basic thing, shaking, like someone doesn't ever calm down, settle in. And I was just getting detailed things I would notice. You bring something up and someone's tongue pops out. And I hadn't had any training on that, you know, the first couple of years on the job. I was really focused on it because we're, we're taught to watch the hands, right? And where the hands are, where they're going, you'd notice things like, why does someone keep patting their pocket there? And then you'd like, okay, in that pocket, you can see that imprint from what looks like a cigarette pack. Hey, mind if I search here? Raise a few, stop me at any time. Yeah, sure. Why do they give consent? I don't know. They give consent, and then you have pulling the bags out. So I'd say probably the first year or two, I started focusing on that, especially when me and Dennis were together. Dennis did a lot of the talking when I was first on. So it was like first year. So you're just sitting, observing, observing, observing. And not always using the, the audio, but using your visuals and observing what people are doing with their bodies. That makes sense. So, as I mean, everyone knows Dennis talks a lot. So you, you were more of the visual person, theoretically, than just his, more of a, like a backup guy that was watching body language and, and that type of stuff just early on in your career then. Yeah, well, I think it was, might not even had a full year on once we became partners. We were partners for about a year. I think I might have been, you know, like just a couple months shy of a full year before we became partners. We were out there and it was, you know, he had the experience. He had the time on. This is his third agency he'd been with. So I pretty much observed. Now I'm observing what he's doing. I'm also observing what the people we're dealing with are doing. You know, and there's that, there's baseline behavior for specific people you're dealing with. And then there's an overall you're looking for. What's out of the, I don't have to explain to you. You do this on a regular basis. Explain to them. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a regular basis, you're looking for what's out of the ordinary from the mass amount of people that you deal with. But, and we got to remember, everyone's an individual. Just because you're dealing with somebody and they're not maintaining eye contact, you very often you can come across somebody that might not do that because of cultural reasons. I'm not going to say, oh, this person must be up to criminal activity. I am going to take note of it. Maybe I'm going to ask another question or so. But the same token, we have a lot of different cultures in the United States from other countries. And we have a different culture here, just with inside the United States alone. I go over this in classes all the time. You have people from Montana, their culture is going to be different from us in Jersey and you in Indiana and the people down in Texas. So in your career, do you feel that the body language is something that you are naturally drawn to? Like, is that something that you, as soon as you started to see that stuff, is that something that you were like, I want to figure this out. I want to understand it even more in depth in like the psychological matter. A hundred percent. And I started getting books on it and like reading more. And unfortunately, all the books out there are meant for business and relationships and stuff like that. And there's not a lot of stuff based just for law enforcement. The closest thing I found to that was Joe Navarro's book, What Everybody is Saying, because he was a former FBI agent. So I read on that and I'm just like, this is really interesting stuff. Then I went into the facial expressions and Travel to Europe, received the training there, and it was just like eye opening. You know, there's a lot of things you'd see, and you'd be like, "Oh, that's that's interesting. I've seen that a shit ton." And I get that in the classes too. We'd be like, "I've seen that before," but I couldn't articulate to myself what it was. You know, one lip corner going back and up, impossible contempt. And I do use possible all the time because sometimes lip corners go back up that way. I've been in trainings over in Europe. I was just in Italy again in February, and one of the instructors was explaining to me, he's a psychologist. He's like. Well, if you notice this, then it's not possible. And I'm like, 
if the context triangle, well, I would still use the word possible, right? And he's like, well, no, I would say to you, I'm like, no, I'm still using the word possible. We're such a litigious society here in the United States. Everything's possible. There's always another reason for anything and everything. Yeah. I mean, all humans are, you know, there's, I mean, yeah, do things for different reasons. And it's, I mean, for the overall, there, there's a possibility that it's contempt, but there's always a possibility that it could be something else, right? A hundred percent could be speech. How many times do people go, eh, right. and they just, their lip corner goes back and up. They're in speech. It happens. It could just be the person on top of that has a facial tick. Yeah. A facial tick. They do. It could be a baseline behavior. Something they do when they're nervous. Cause they're, everybody's an individual. Everybody does different things. And that's a big thing that we, people have to realize we can pick out stuff. Okay. This looks different from the general population. However, it doesn't necessarily mean someone's lying to you or they're concealing something. Yes. I might call it what I call a red flag or a hotspot where I want to ask more questions. If I notice something, but you know, there's different things. Like we talk about the, the nose wrinkle and disgust that you see when people are disgusted with the universal trigger, what causes the emotion and disgust being an offensive stimulus. You'll see that nose wrinkle. But there's people that have ticks. They wrinkle their fucking noses. And on top of it, you've been to Puerto Rico before? No. So if you go to Puerto Rico, you'll see they have like a, a nose wrinkle thing. It's kind of like a, like a what's up kind of going on thing. If you go sit down at a bar in Puerto Rico and a bartender comes up to you and they wrinkle their nose, they're not disgusted with your American ass sitting at the bar. <laughs> they want to know what the fuck you want to drink. Now, in our country, in the United States, I mean, it's still part of the U.S., Puerto Rico, but if you go out and someone, you sit at the bar and the bartender, it's either too loud or they don't want to talk to you, what do they do if they want to know you want to drink? They do that, that chin up movement, I got a little you. flip up. Yep, I don't yeah. know what they're yeah, doing yeah, in Indiana. Yeah, no, you're right. You're they right. probably give you a hug and like welcome <laughs> in and corn husking. And, you yeah. know, it's a different story in everyone different parts of the country. Everyone loves everyone in Indiana. What's that? Everyone loves everyone in Indiana. in Indiana. But, you know, even in this country, things are so different. You know, you walk by, I'm going off on a cultural tangent, but, you go, and most places in the United States, you walk by people, they say hi. I just got to Minneapolis three days ago. I just got, I told you, I flew back. I got in this morning, early, one in the morning, whatever. And when I showed up at the car rental, they're like, hey, how you doing? Big smiles. At the hotel, big smiles. Everywhere you go, big smiles. You go pick up food, big smiles. I'm like, what the fuck are you smiling at? What's <laughs> up? What are you happy to see me? You don't even know me. And I don't smile most of the time because I'm just like... Do I have to do this? In Jersey, we don't do that. So when I just walked into this office today for shits and giggles, I do this sometimes. I walk through here and I, the woman wouldn't even look at me and go, I go, hey, how you doing? She turns <laughs> to me. She's like, oh, hi. He's like, fucking, I'm like, what is this guy up to? Because that's what we would think, right? Like, what are you up to? Why are you saying hi to me? But you go to the rest of the country, there's that polite smile a lot of the time. That's why I love coming here, actually, because I say hi to everyone. I open the door for everyone, and I'm smiling. <laughs> and everyone is like, it's, so, it's, it's amusing to me because I will just watch their uncomfortability that I'm actually being genuinely nice and doing something. And, and the majority, it's like, they're like, what the fuck is going on? But it, it, and then, I, I don't know, eventually you'll see them, like, they'll crack, and they'll be like, oh, hi. And then they kind of just, you know, walk in if I'm holding the door open for them or whatever. It's also why when I come here, I give everyone fucking hugs. <laughs> it, there's some people that it's like so awkward i'm just like you know what i don't even care it's better than being like doing that weird awkward like shake hand bro hug type shit i'm just like i'm going for fucking hugs every single time and then it makes it nice and consistent across the board is that big in indiana is that what happens out there you're just like hugging the cornfields nah, is that like uh a... so it's something i th i don't know it's something i think i started doing uh about 10 years ago i lost someone significant in my life and then uh my true friends i realized like man like the the love I truly had for them and stuff, just like my family and friends. So then now it's just something, even when my friends aren't so open to it and they're awkward, I, those are the ones I love hugging the most. So anytime, anytime we go somewhere, like everyone gets a hug from me. Everybody gets a hug from Every, me. I, so it's not an Indiana thing, it's a Kenny Williams thing. I mean, it could be an Indiana thing, but maybe I'm over the top because I'll give people a, a hug high and, high and a hug bye. And so I don't know. Could be, it could be more me thing. I don't know. I, I, I'll have to, my... It makes my wife uncomfortable, so I kind of like it, too. Because then she's like, well, now I look like a fucking asshole if I'm not hugging anyone. I'm like, well, yeah, I mean, kind of do. So then it makes her hug people. I don't know. It's entertaining to me, but it's, it's also genuine. I don't know. I, like, I feel like breaking down that like, human barrier type thing, hugging people, especially people that you like and, you're, you're adding, you, you like and that you're friendly with, it shows that you actually care about them. It says some like, awkward handshake or whatever the hell is going to happen next. Not concerned about germs. I don't give a shit. I want germs. <laughs> oh, I'm the guy that opens the door handles with my shirt. People in class seen it before too. Are like, you serious? Yeah, I, I was in Florida back in January, February, and uh, one of the guy goes, "Oh, 
Sean, you got an issue with uh <laughs> with germs a little bit? I go, no, what do you mean? He goes, you open the door with your shirt. I go, yeah, well, everybody else touches the door hand. I don't know where they touched and what they've been and tucking in themselves. And, you know, so I try to, my thing is, and I'm not like, um, it's, it's weird. It's sad. I don't consider myself a germaphobe. But He's I'm a fucking a little, germaphobe. I'm not, obviously. A, I'm not a germaphobe. <laughs> I like to wash my hands. I keep my hands away from my face. I'm just, I don't want to get sick because I get sick. I can't go to classes. Other than that, if I'm like home for a week, I won't even, I'll be like, ah, whatever. I'll touch door handle, like family and friends. Even during flu season, like in winter, I go see my family and I'm like, they're like, oh, and I'm like, whoa, and my Italian side. And they're like, oh, I'm like, and they get pissed. They get pissed. I'm like, listen, <laughs> I can't be, it's flu season. My mother's like, what do you mean it's flu season? I have flu season. I can't, I don't want to get sick. And then I got, you know, you got cops that show up for a class. People come from out of state. And then there I am with the sniffles or some shit. And I can't go. You know what I mean? It's, and that's my mindset. I guess I get it. It's pretty germaphobic in my mind, but I guess I. I kind of understand. <laughs> but you understand what I'm coming from. I get, I get where you're coming from. And, still, like, I don't know. So I like to not consider myself term for And I was the guy, we go to the gas pumps at work to go fuel up. Because you can't pump gas to stay in New Jersey if you're not aware. So that's the only place we would pump gas was, you know, your patrol car at the, you know, the town's pumping station. So I was the guy that would put a glove on and go do it. Because, you know, everybody's touching these things. <laughs> it's but, definitely a germaphobe, dude. But... But then COVID hit, and I didn't anybody want to think that I was I was scared of COVID. So then I just stopped, and I was like, "Oh, I'm out here." And that's when I went like reverse. It sounds weird, right? Like, very interesting. And what is the fucking why can you not pump? Like, I don't like why is this a law? What is the rationalization behind it? I literally posted something on my Instagram yesterday because I'm like, I went to get gas, and it's the most awkward fucking thing. Like, oh, I guess give me gas. Like, what the fuck do you say? Like, let me just pump this shit. Well, the thing is, I, I was told in the past is because of jobs. We're, you got to remember, we're the most densely populated state in the country. And, you, and what, this is a desirable job to fucking pump gas? That's what I, I know. I know. It's not like a, you're making fucking <laughs> 100 grand a year pumping gas. Right. I pumped gas as a kid when I was, uh, oh, was like, 17. Is it more like that? Like the kid? No, you got adults pumping gas, That's too. What I said. Well, the yeah, guy, the no. guy was, uh, pump mine was like elderly like i was like i feel bad i just let me pump this shit yeah no i don't you know i don't know if some of the places offer benefit benefits when i, I was there you. was it was cash you know back in the, it was back in the day you know what i mean <laughs> so you go pump your gas in other states and the first time i did it i was 17 i'm in pennsylvania i'm like how do you work this fucking thing it was <laughs> the old school ones where we gotta lift the thing up so you know that i didn't know that i was standing out there like a fucking idiot i'm like i'm never gonna make it back to jersey and the only other state where it was illegal, Oregon. Now, I, they were telling me out there, some of the rural counties now don't have to have people. But then I was still showing up at stations over there, and they pump it for you. They still, because, you know, the thing is, if they change it over here, how many people there are that never done it, it would, could you imagine the first few months? Fucking chaos. You would have 50 cars <laughs> and guys, what do I do with this thing? What do I do? And everybody's going to stand there. It would be a mess. So at this point, it is what it is. Well, why would they make the law? I, I just don't understand. Do you have any idea? Like, what was... I'm just curious. Like, I don't you know. know. It's always been that way. To me, we're so used to it. And I do think it's nice to an extent. Everything's got its pros and its cons. The con is I got to wait for the guy. I love pumping out of state. If I'm driving to Ohio, as soon as I get to Pennsylvania, I'll get my gas. I don't want to get it in Jersey because I don't want to wait. What do I got to wait for you for? I could jump out and do it myself. But think about it. If you've got uh, elderly parents, you've got someone in their 60s, there. 70s, right? They don't have to get out and pump their gas. Also, you get someone that's uh, alone and younger. You don't have to worry about your kids or whatever. You know, at least there's somebody, one or two people working there that's out there instead of getting out of the car. When we see these gas station robberies, you see that there was the one in Florida where the guy flanked them around the back and they, they, no situational awareness whatsoever, you know, and it's... I mean, in Indiana, they... No, but they used to have ones where they'd be like full service or self-service. So like if it was an elderly person, you'd pull up and it'd hit this like thing you run over and it ding, ding. And then that was like the full service, and then they would come out, pump your ass, or the other one you pump. But I don't, I, I can't remember the last time I saw one of those. But we used to have them like that for like elderly and stuff along those lines. That makes sense. yeah. So that makes sense if they have both. Mm -hmm. But then again, if you got one, you might as well. Have, but I, me, I go in there. I want to pump my own gas. I don't. I don't have time for these shenanigans. Where the guy comes, right? Uh, yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I don't know. We, sorry about that tangent. <laughs> well, it's the wrong to, I like that tangent. <laughs> That's a Let's I'm go. Let's it. go back to fucking facial expressions. Oh, instead. okay. Um, in your career on traffic stops, were you able to see all this shit, or especially the micro expressions? Uh, that's what I'm curious about. If you leave someone in their car during a traffic stop, 
were you able to see the the same body behaviors or do you feel that they felt comfortable in that in that little box of a car because that's like their home and security and now if you were to remove them from the car were you able to see be more observant on body posture and all that other we're usually removing people from cars. Uh, the majority of my career was in narcotics, which you know. Mm -hmm. So we were pulling people out, of the, not pulling them physically out, you know. <laughs> they don't have any fucking more losses. <laughs> but you, you get one person out of a car at a time. The other person, even in the car, you know, the same way you get the passenger breathing all messed up, you'll get the facial expressions. Now, macro expression, I'm sorry, micro expressions you will see. But you see subtle and mini, or also known as mini expressions, much more often which are the partial movements of the muscles of the face. Is that when they're out of the car compared to in the car? No, you see them both. You see them both? Them. It's a reaction usually to what you're asking. So you ask somebody something, you see the lips disappear. Possible subtle expression of anger or frustration or annoyance. They could be enraged, but under that category. Then if you ask, there's other things. You can see just the nose wrinkle, just the upper lip raise. Just eyebrows being lowered, just inner corners of the eyebrows being raised and possible subtle expression of sadness. You're more likely to see those than the minis. I'm sorry, than the micros. The reason being is micros happen so fucking fast. If you look away for a split second, because I'm looking at what your feet are doing, I can miss what happened with your face. And I've been asked all the time, what are you looking at when you're dealing with people? You're pretty much doing a scan. If I'm looking at your face, I'm likely to miss something somewhere else, especially because I'm thinking about what I'm going to ask. I'm listening to what you said. And we talked about before, nonverbal vocal changes as well. Pitch, tone, paralanguage, meaning the ums, the ahs, the ahs, ah, 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 ah. and you, you're taking up so much information, you're not going to catch it all. You're just not. You know that as well as I do. I've done mentoring programs with people from Europe, and they're like, I watched a video, and then I watched the video again, and I picked up on stuff that I didn't the first time. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and they're like, well, I'm missing things. I go, you're not a fucking robot. I didn't tell them like that. You don't tell them like that. It's civilians, you know what I mean? But I'm like, you're not a robot. You're not going to get everything. It just is what it is. If I'm looking at your feet, I'm going to miss something with your facial expressions. Now, your limitations in a car, and you're looking for different things, obviously. If I got someone in the car leaned over with their hands on their knees or their thigh and they're leaning in like this, well, I'm going to be on that person. Why? You don't see that very often. Now, if you've got a photographic memory, you think back to yourself when you've seen this, you've seen it with people that had illegal drugs on them, illegal guns, had warrants for their arrest, they wanted to fight, run when they got out, or they just had something where they ended up getting arrested. You're out like this, why? People want to get up, how do we get up? We get up like this very often. I got someone leaning over in a car like this, especially a driver, I shouldn't say especially a driver, but a driver too, steering wheels like, you know, six inches away from their face. Well, why are you leaning that? That's not a comfortable position talking to you. And the passengers too leaned over. You go watch on YouTube all the body cam footages of crazy things happening. When someone's in a car, lean like this, jumping into the driver's seat to drive away. If they're in the passenger, wanting to fight afterwards, pulling a gun. You get someone lean over like this, I'm going to be locked the fuck in. This is not something you see. Think about it. Everybody's usually, now everybody's an individual, but the overall majority, watch out, people sit like this. Maybe they're up a little bit, and we always get the people in the passenger seat. There's just they're just taking a nap, you know. They you saw them in a car sitting up five minutes before to stop or two minutes, but now it's time for nap time, or you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, leaning over. So you're looking for different things because someone's sitting down, as opposed to a field interview where you got someone standing up, and I'm going to be observing the full body in a different posture. You know, are you blading your body on me? Well, that's going to be a problem. I'm going to move around and see if you continue blading. Do you have a weapon there? Do you want to fight me? I think that's the biggest thing in law enforcement that I mean that I learned young is the whole blading thing. I think that's something that's taught universally. Is just watch the blading because they're doing it for a reason to keep you away from something or even some more like they're if they can draw easily. You know what I'm saying? Like without you seeing. You know what I'm saying? If they're blading, they're blading for a reason. Are they blading to, to like wind up to hit you? Or are they blading to get access to something almost blading you so you can't see what they're doing? Um, those were the two things that that before meeting you before taking some of your classes that's the that was that was the most consistent thing that we always talked about was like the whole blading but then after your class like even that right then sitting up and and i never put two and two together watching you talk watching you speak some of your classes i'm like that makes perfect sense because even when you make that movement i already like it me naturally looking at it, i'm like oh shit he wants to get up he's trying to get away you're yeah. getting ready to run like those are the those are the things that that instantly are crossing my mind that prior to to meeting you prior to talking to you, I would have never 
put two and two together, I don't think. I mean, I don't, I can't say never, but I don't know if I would have. You probably had the, we bring this up, you probably would be like, shit, something's going on, but can you articulate it to yeah, yourself like, and give you, yourself right. that extra second? So the, you bring up the blading. You were taught that in academy? Yeah. They broke down blading for you? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. That's the only thing, that, but uh, everything you yeah. teach, that's the only one that they broke down. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. No, no, that, and it, I mean, it, but when they broke it down, it made sense. Like it, the blading is, you know, I don't know. Which way are they? Yeah, what it was. Maybe it was even like different the, uh, during defensive tactics and stuff when someone's blading, yeah. like, 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 you know, just like, no, be prepared. So, yeah, it's interesting. So, we've talked about in the past that I, I focus a lot on voice tone, voice inflection. When someone is confident with an answer that they're, when I'm speaking to them, it's usually pretty boisterous. If I ask them something that they don't uh, feel comfortable or maybe they're being deceptive about, it's easy for me to pick up that tone inflection. I don't know why it is, but for me personally, that's something I pay a lot of attention to. Are you picking up on both of those, like the micro expressions or facial expressions as they're speaking? Are you able to do both? Yeah, you're, like I said, you're, when you're done talking to somebody, especially in a formal setting, you should be fucking exhausted. And you're going to pick up as much as possible, but I might miss something because if I pick up on a micro facial expression and then two seconds later there's a change in pitch, I might my brain might be processing, oh, this was said and I noticed this and I might miss it. It is what it is. And then you watch back later or something. And uh, if it's an interview room, be like, oh, I missed that. But yeah, it's one of those things where you're going to try to take it as much as possible. You're not. And what you do, you got someone next to you. If you're not looking at them, a lot easier if I'm looking down, but then I'm missing all the body language. So it's a give and take. You're that's, gonna- just, that's what I was going with. Like, so for me, it's really hard for me to do everything that I'm doing and then focus on their body and every, I mean, somewhat of their body I can still see, but like uh, the micro expressions I don't usually pick up on. And that's what I wanted to bring up earlier is like when you break down some of my videos for me and you've seen the, the, the micro expressions and stuff, I, I've never picked up on them. Well, I can't say never, but it's very rare for me to pick up on them on a traffic stop immediately. But if I go back and watch the video, now that you've shown me a lot of stuff, I'm like, damn, all right. Like I can see yeah. that their voice tone and their voice inflections almost coinciding with their micro expressions that you've taught me that are kind of in the same realm of emotions that they're going through. Yeah. So it, it's interesting to me because I'm very visual and you, from what you're telling me, you're very auditory. However, you're obviously very visual as well because when you're watching traffic. Different. I think right? that's, that's a different element though. For some reason, yeah. I think I truly think it is. Or maybe it's that I have so much going on when I'm talking to people that I like, mm. and then I'm listening. I don't know. You but overtake it, with the auditory. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I, I always felt that I, I heard things better than I see. Because, there, I mean, there's so many, it's a tool, right? The, learning the microfacial expressions, learning subtle facial expression, learning body language, statement analysis, the, you know, statement analysis where you break down the way people, uh, I mean, obviously it started out like the written statements. You can use that when people are talking. They say, I went over here, then I went over there, went over here, and then, oh, that's fucking interesting, where the I go that we just had, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. There's so much, if you really listen to when people talk, and they just kind of like dance around the question, I mean, you know, because you're listening most of the time, like, and the, obviously there's the verifiable facts when things don't make sense, like, oh, so we're here in, uh, in Jersey right now, yeah? So where are you going? I'm going to Delaware. All right, where are you coming from? Uh, Pennsylvania. What the fuck are you doing in this area of Jersey? <laughs> right? And it's crazy. You tell people this, that are, and we've gotten those before. I'm right. sure you've gotten them. Right, like, right. You're just like, where are you going? And it's like, no, and you keep saying this. You're like, well, this doesn't make sense. You know, it's a, but you're putting that together at the same time, reading by language. There's a lot going on. Yeah, no, you, I agree. You watch a video three times. You know, I've had agencies from around the country send me videos. Hey, can you take a look at this? I'm not watching a video once. I'm not watching it twice. I watch that thing 10 times, you know, like, because I want to fucking make sure, did I miss anything the first couple times I watch it? Because you're not a robot. I'm not a robot. Nobody's a robot. Where we're just going ding, 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 all these indicators, all this data to bring. You're going to miss things. It, it's just facts. What do you think about with the, uh, the AI stuff that's coming out? Do you think eventually that they will have artificial intelligence that's going to pick up on all this shit so like you say you pull someone in in an interview room yeah. i'll have you a, like a like literally like some device maybe a camera that's picking up on this and it's like when you ask this it's going to just list everything that was going on so i think in the long run i could see something like that helping law enforcement so then you can go back and look and be like oh you you know this was his emotions here just based on maybe we should talk more about this or this or this i think that's very possible and it's one of those things it might sound a little crazy but you go tell somebody 
150 years ago that you're going to be able to fly in a metal tube through the sky from one point A to point B, they'd be like, you're fucking out of your mind. So I think it's very possible. I think that day can happen. I think there might even be a time where they can scan a brain and they'll find out there's a part of the brain that gets activated when people lie or are deceptive. However, at that same token, I think they could have that stuff and doesn't get intrusive. It's in the room. They pick up on things. It, and just to assist you, just to assist you, you're going to get some communist activist judge that goes, you know, during the suppression and throw it right out. And I think that's what will happen. I don't think it'll be allowed. As good as it is, they're going to be like, no, you still have a right to lie. Done. Yeah, I guess. I mean, but if, if we're, you know, you Mirandize them, all that other stuff, we're sitting in, in now I'm in an interview room or interrogation room and we're talking and you've already signed that stuff away. I don't, I think it would be really hard for them to like, and especially if it's factual based. And, and I mean, you look at some of the AI stuff that they're doing now, like it is, it blows my mind. That absolutely is insane that the technology and how fast it's moving is, I mean, it, it's cool for law enforcement. It's kind of scary for me as a person, yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I think that, I think cause with the good, there's always bad. And if you get bad actors, it's going to create some bad shit. But I, I just, man, the way technology is moving, how fast it's moving. I think that it's, I, I don't know. I think it'll be here before you even think of it, before you even know. If you, if you told me, I don't know, you're, you're my age, right? Yeah, I'm 40. How old are you? I'm 40. So like you tell me in when we're in like second grade that by this time in our lives that we could literally get on the internet and learn answers to anything in the world. Like literally like like we our entire schooling was about finding answers. Now it, it's at our fingertips and we didn't even need any of that shit pretty much. You That's know what true, I mean? Yeah. Like I mean there's a lot of foundational things but like now like doing math problems. I could just google it and I'll get the answer. You know? So I, back then, if you said that, no one would fucking believe you. And I just think that the way it's going, man, I, I just I think that there's going to be a lot of tools at our hands as law enforcement. And I, it's going to be interesting. And I hope it's in my lifetime because I really want to see where it is. Not even necessarily in my career, just in my lifetime. Yeah. I, see, I think that's the difference of being working in Indiana and then here in New yeah, Jersey, yeah, yeah, the yeah, mindset. Right. Yeah, maybe it's allowed in Indiana, but New Jersey and the other uh, People's Republic states <laughs> won't allow it. You know, I just, I don't see it happening in it. And like you said, for law enforcement as a tool, yeah, it sounds good. But then you look at our rights. Like, I don't want anything. You, you know, you could be walking through a mall or something and this thing scanning no, you or whatever. Yeah, like, a, like, leave me alone. I'm very cautious when it comes to technology. Like, I, I think there's a point where you got to say, okay, we have enough technology besides healthcare advances to, you know, to keep people from getting sick and, and to help people when they're sick. But Certain things, it's just like, it's too intrusive. You know? I, I'm, I'm, I'm not doubting that. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, as a cop, if we're yeah. able to use those tools, yep. that would be cool. Cool. As a person, it kind of scares exactly. me. Like, I'm like, ah. Uh, I agree, 100%. I don't know where, where I stand on that as an individual. Yeah. And like, think, um, you ever read the book 1984 by George Orwell? Are you familiar with it? So that book, they have like TVs that are in rooms and the government's listening to them and like, uh, Big Brother's always watching and always listening everywhere and people. And you, and you read that book. I believe it, what was it written? The 50s? Yeah, the 50s. So they thought that was going to be 34 years from them. Well, they were off by what? Probably another 40 years. Because that's kind of where we're at now. If you read it, you're like, now it's obviously fiction. And I don't read a lot of fiction. I read almost exclusively nonfiction. However, that book was brought up to me by several people. And you hear about it all the time. And you're like, okay, people got these Googles and Alexas and all this shit in their house. That's listening to your phone, apparently, <laughs> yeah, is listening like, to everything you yeah, say. Yeah. It's like, well, you know, uh, yeah, where it, are we losing ourselves as humans? You know what I no, mean? No, I mean, even with like the Ugh. facial recognition type stuff, I, it's great for like if it's in the right hands and, yeah. we're, and it's used, being used for the right reasons. Someone kills someone or we don't know who it is and we can see his face and then no one knows who he is, but yet we can put in facial recognition and it identifies him. That's great. But now what if it's just because there's some bad actors that want to know who you are? Yeah. That, like, I, I mean, that's, that's, that's the scary a a avenue of technology in my eyes when it's not being used for the right reasons. A hundred percent. And you never know when it'll. Do you have clear for the airports? I do not. All right. So I got you up. Pre-check. You don't pre -check. All the mountain you travel, <laughs> you got to get pre-check. What's wrong just, with you? Dennis just bitched at me this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to get pre-check. So I got pre-check and then I got clear. Now clear scans your eyeballs. And there it's I like am. a retina scan type shit? I don't know what the fuck it is. I'm, <laughs> they probably got me now. That's it. When, they, when the communists take over, they're going to show up at my house first. You're, you're probably better off not getting it. So I got that. But then 
you know, I was always thinking like, you know, DNA. So in the past, I was like, you know, I don't want anybody to have my DNA. I looked through my, my Marine Corps records, medical records. They take your fucking DNA then in case, you know, something happens <laughs> yeah. to you in combat. So they have my DNA on record. I'm sure that's in a national database. So fuck it. I'm going to do, I did the, uh, what's the other one? 23 plus me? Not that one. That's the one I was thinking, uh, the main one, the one that Ancestry, I did that one. Yeah, I'm not interesting. I'm just Irish and Italian. That's it. I already, I already knew that. They didn't give me, and they're like, oh, you're 2% French. I'm like, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> you know what I mean? I did it too. I did 23 plus me, but uh, that one has like a medical thing. So it shows, um, like my grandpa had Parkinson's. So it shows if you have the chromosome to get Parkinson's. If you have the, like, yeah, like, so you pay a little extra money, but it also shows if you have the genetic makeup to have this, this, and this. And it breaks really? it down. I was like, that's the reason I did it for like the health benefit aspect of it. Oh, see, I kind of don't want to know though. I wanted to know about Parkinson's just with my grandpa having yeah. it. And I was like, because there's ways now that if you have that, that they can almost prevent it or, or predict the onset right? and then like push it back almost like delay it. Really? So I was like, yeah, like that. So that's kind of what I was looking into more of that stuff. And then, yeah, I don't have it. So that's a good thing. So that makes sense to me to try for if there's something that could be preventable. Mm -hmm. I just went, we have a, Captain Busio exam here. You ever heard of that? No. It's a firefighter that passed away, and they have a fund where first responders can go and get their their hearts. It's a cardiopulmonary oh, exam, okay. cool. so it's it's really nice. You go there, and they, I mean, they do stuff you don't get at your normal physical, where they're just like, "Hey, grab you and cough." You know what <laughs> right. I mean? So they really go to town and like check a lot of things. And I've done it. This is the third time I've done it, and this time they come back. Uh, they call me. I'm in Minnesota, and uh, I hear they're like, uh, "So you got a um." You got, they're explaining the chambers of the heart, and they're like, one of them's like a little thick. And I'm like, what do you mean it's thickened? <laughs> do I have to stop drinking Jameson? What are you talking about? <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, no, no, it kind of happens. We'll just keep an eye on it. And then he goes, uh, then we get the one flapper. He goes, oh, you got like three valves. Because the one valve's not sitting right. You get some blood coming. I go, what do you mean I got blood coming? Now I'm like grabbing my heart. I'm feeling it. You know, I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, he's like, no, no, it's normal. He's like, I think like uh, probably 75% of the population probably has it. I go, why, how the fuck is it normal? He goes, it's just not sitting right. And I'm like, well, how do I make it sit right? I'm like losing my mind. I'm one of these people now. I'm like, I'm waking up every day going, is it, is it going normal? You know, I, and I want to get checked out, but I want to get checked out. I want to walk out being like, yeah, you're good, bro. Go have, go have as many cocktails as you want. <laughs> I think even with like some more of the technology shit, I think that I could just see like you get a shot and it has like this like little fucking computer that goes in you and like checks everything out. And then like, you know, like, and like, I mean, just the way technology is going, I know that's probably like people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? You lost your mind? But I could just, I mean, they have so many ways to, to make sure that your body's working efficiently in the right way. Now it's like, it's only a matter of time that they're going to have ways that they could put something in you to correct things and not have to have like some invasive surgery. So, oh, I'm having heart problems. Oh, we'll give you this. It goes in there and does this and you're good or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. I just, yeah. I think, I think it, with technology, things are getting faster more intelligent and smaller and i just think eventually maybe you know these massive surgeries and all this stuff will be preventable or even they won't be as invasive do you see uh we'll go back to do you see these expressions with your kids like can you can yeah. you, do, oh, do, yeah. do you do you dissect your wife the same way too like who looks at their wife you know? <laughs> <laughs> people always ask me that no i usually like i'll pick up on saying it's it's one of those things like i, I equate it to reading license plates you read plates all the time at work you get behind cars and you just get used to reading plates. How many times have you been off? You get behind a car and you read a plate, right? You don't even want to. It's the same thing with facial expressions. I don't want to, but I'll be talking to someone and like right now you're steepling, right? I don't, there's nothing. I'm not like, I got to read Kenny Williams where we're standing here. <laughs> and who was in here before us, I was reading the body language of both of them. Like someone looked more, uh, what's the word I want to look for? Nervous than the other person, oh, yeah. right? So I pick up on things and exactly what they're doing. Like I'll read my, my kids' body language in certain areas where we're not certain certain places when we go places like what they're doing and even when you ask them questions. So yeah, I'm I'm reading them more than the wife because like I don't I don't want to say I don't care what's going on with the wife. It sounds terrible. <laughs> Better not listen to this one. But you know what I mean? I want to know what my kids are doing, like how they're doing, what's up with them. So I'm I'm more in tune with that, especially with the amount I travel now. You know when I spend time with them, I'm really like in tune with what's going on. That makes sense. I, I, I don't have kids, but I, I would assume I would want, if I was gone a lot, I would make sure that they're not, when I'm talking to them, that they're not like having any type of animosity towards me. Yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? Like oh, dad's yeah. always gone. I'm going to pretend like I'm, I'm happy that he's here, but it, I really wish he was here more or something, you know, something along those lines. Yeah. So like uh, something, I don't know. That's how I would 
use it, I guess. Yeah, I, I do that. And even one hits the other one, the younger one, she always does a shoulder shrug. You know, one-sided or both is uncertainty in most cultures around the world and obviously in ours. So she just does that. I'm like, why'd you hit your sister? Tell me why doesn't lawyers up on me. Doesn't say a fucking <laughs> word. Just shoulder shrugs. And I'm like, well, what do I do with this? And I'm like, all right, that's it. Go to your room. I'm taking your stuff. And I'm like, and she's smart. She's real smart. Just lawyer up. Don't say a word. <laughs> Start shoulder shrugging. Hey, guys, if you're enjoying the Street Cop Podcast, do us a favor and go with, give us a review on iTunes or Spotify, wherever you're listening to us. Tell a friend. We don't charge anything for the episodes. We appreciate your support. Check us out on any social platform by putting into the search bar, Street Cop Training. Give us a follow. We have a lot of free content coming out every single day that you might not catch here on the podcast, and it's important for you to be able to do your job more professionally, and we also entertain you as well. So when you started to develop this, how did you end up getting into that school in Europe? Like you went to that school, but was uh, that your desire? Do they, are you picked based on the desire of people, um, the amount of people that want to go to the school? Does your agency send you? How did that happen? No, and what was it? What was the name of that school? It was, what was the name of the class? ETAC and ESAC. It was emotional skills and competency. And the other one was evaluating truth and credibility. And then there was the train the trainer portion after you received that training, which gave me a licensure to go out and teach. I was just in Italy again to up the licenses for a higher train the trainer to actually give those two full courses, not just give the materials that there was a lower level licensing that I had before. I just went back because they were doing away with the one licensing. So I got the other. Now, I, I was reading psychology books. I like figuring out why people do what they do and say what they say. And they were talking about these microfacial expressions. And this Dr. Ekman, who had discovered their seven universal emotions that show up around the, the world, along with his colleagues, they had figured this out. And they had this facial action coding system that they created. So what I did was I went over computer. I wanted to find the training. So I typed in the word facial. I hit the enter button too quick. Some other things came up. <laughs> I tell that joke in class, too. But I love that one. I didn't know where it was going. And then like, like, yeah. it clicked. It, it clicked. It, it clicked. <laughs> so they, so I, I couldn't find anything for law enforcement. And I'm like, this is weird. I'm like, there's got to be some kind of training for this somewhere. And then, so I ordered the facial action coding system, this fax. Uh, so it measures the movements of the muscles in the face, how much they move, way they, which ways they move. It's for fucking psychological researchers. It's fucking boring as fuck. They put numbers next to the movements and letters for the pronunciation of it. How pronounced. And I'm like, what am I going to do with this thing? I'm a fucking giant paperweight. So I gave it to a guy from Alabama after doing a podcast with Dennis saying, anybody wants this, they can have it. I've had it for years. So I sent it down there. In the meantime, I was like, you know what? Uh, let me get some of the books he wrote with his colleagues. I read them. You only pick up so much in a book, right? It's like, especially something like that. Statement analysis, you can probably pick up more reading and and because it has to do with words, I need to see this shit. So then I so researched and researched, and I found the training overseas. So I went over there, and no, my agency did not pay because everybody will ask, "Oh, how'd you get your agency to pay?" No, I paid. Uh, how, Visa paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you want, if you if you care to, I'm just curious, approximately how much that shit cost. Oh, it was uh, with travel, licensing, all the training. It was like ten to twelve thousand dollars. How many? That's on how many days were you there? I was there for about two weeks. Damn. And okay. then I came back a few months later. I went to the Body Language Institute down in Virginia. That was five days for 7000 Now you're going back some years. Now when you look into it, a lot of stuff's like close to $2,000 a day. Like it's, it's very expensive. It's time consuming. A lot of it's time consuming because the way civilians do things, a little different from how we do in law enforcement. <laughs> right. There's a lot of partnering up. Talk about how you feel. And all this. You're like... <laughs> How about you just tell me how I feel and we'll get out of here? You know what I mean? Yeah, you, so you put a bunch of cops and you have them partner up or have them do group activities can fucking luck. Yeah, exactly. And that's the thing that, like, when I got what Italy, like, oh, this is not. And it, I'll never forget when I came back from England, we had one of our early meetings with one of the trainers over there. And he's like, so what kind of questions are you getting asked in class? I go, what do you mean? He goes, what kind of questions are you getting asked? I go, I don't get asked questions. He goes, haven't you done several classes? I go, I haven't got to ask the question yet. I didn't get asked the question until like my 10th, 11th class because cops, you know what's going to happen. It's like, shut the fuck up. We got to get out of here on time. What are you doing? You know, someone from the same age, but oh, shut up. Usually you get someone to come up and, break, and break. on breaks or lunch. And every once in a while, depending on where you are in the country, certain areas of the country will ask more questions than others. And what I do is like, 
I have those questions and then I go repeat them in front of the entire class. Cause I'm like, if he's having it, I'll go up there and be like, during the break, I had this question, not putting anyone out. And this is what it was, blah, 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 blah. And this is what I would do, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes that will get people to start asking more questions. Uh, Sometimes, but not all the time. I do that from all the classes in the past. There's one video I should, I get asked like a million questions on. So I take the six, seven, eight questions I kept on getting asked. I go, okay, these are the questions I asked. Bow, bow, bow. Here's the answer. Dum, 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 dum. And then maybe I'll get, you know, one every 10 classes, someone will ask another one but you know i was just in minnesota not a fucking question <laughs> uh, on break i got a question like but it was more like hey do you recommend any other books and yeah utah i had some questions montana i don't think i had any you know it depends on where you are in the country i'm going to utah finally for the first time i've not yet been to montana so you go to some places that i'm like you go to places that i'm like i've always wanted to go there but i would don't know really, really know what I, what i would do there so like i'm like man uh utah I, I don't know. I like Utah, Arizona, some places that like northern Arizona. I like. I, I I've always wanted to go there just because I want to see. I'm weird. I, I like. I like like the scenery, like like the land, like the land, like the mountains, the fucking the clouds. Like I just want to see it all, and I want to experience it. I went up to uh, Vermont or New Hampshire in the winter, and it snowed, and driving through those mountains was fucking amazing. So that, like some of those things, like no one, my like my wife, not a big fan of that, but I'm like, I just want to go and see it i can sit out here all day and just or even like go hike and shit like i that's something that i want to do so my ultimate goal is to get to like idaho and, and montana and, and places like that fucking alaska you'll love it you'll love, if you you like hiking uh i i don't know if I, I i enjoy it but i'm not i don't necessarily I'm at, if i'm at home i'm not doing it yeah. you know what i'm saying like i'll, I'll work out and, and do you know my cardio shit and that stuff but I'm, if i'm at home i'm not i'm not going hiking but if, i would like to Hike through unique areas, if that makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense. I live in fucking New Jersey, bro. <laughs> right. Where am I going hiking here? <laughs> yeah, no, I guess fucking it. Pine Barrens is boring as fuck. It's cool because it's solitude, but we don't have anything special. All right, back to where we were. We go on these tangents. So you go over to Europe for two weeks. Where'd you go in Europe? I went to Manchester in England, and then I went this past time in February. I was in Milan. How many um, people were in that class, and were there any like law enforcement, military type? There's one interrogator from. There's like, it was different because some people just went for the basic classes okay. and then the train, the trainer just uh, started to fizzle out. There was an investigator from the, not investigator, I think they called him investigator from the, the US military over in Germany. He okay. couldn't even be in photos and stuff because he was doing like interrogations in, in uh, different parts of the country. Then there was a guy, I still keep in touch with David from, uh, from Australia. He's, oh, a, cool. he's my Australian connection, Department of Defense official. And he was in the army there and that was, yeah, there was a cool, there was a German journalist there, right? The woman's in there real pretty. I'm seeing her. I'm like, okay, German journalist. What do I think? Man, eh, she like works for some local paper or some shit. Come back. She got like all these followers. She does like the presentation shows like out in, in Germany. She's like famous over in Germany, you know, like, that's cool. like, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then you've got a lot of, a lot of psychologists, business negotiators, and human resources executives like hr yeah because okay. you figure they interview yeah, people all sense. the time they want to know you know plus the, like big fortune 500 companies i'm guessing yeah big companies from around around the world there were women from indonesia there were people from sweden finland like all over it's a class and this might sound stupid it's like in english like it's I, in english okay i didn't really everybody fucking knows english you know i was in milan doing classes in english i don't fucking speak italian that's I, cool yeah and you got people like me milan's an international city yeah, yeah. The, most people speak English there. They had a fucking class in English. Now they had people from Hungary there. Where else? A, lot, a few Italians. Everybody's speaking English though. To me, it's it's amazing. Like I could barely speak Spanish. I'm very low conversation. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm the same way. Yeah, I, I mean, and the I only, the only Spanish time. I learned is basically like through talking to people that speak Spanish <laughs> on traffic stops. Uh -huh. Like literally, like I I don't know anything. Um, which which was challenging, but now however my brain works i'm able to piece like normal sentences together or at least say words where i can get through the traffic stop but i use a translator most of the time which kind of hampers at things because i feel like the delay mm. i feel like people that are being deceptive typically are going to downplay the amount of english they know so i'm asking it then it's waiting for the translator yeah. and it's buying they're buying all this time when they know because they know exactly what i said the fucking first time yeah and, and so I, I, sometimes that hampers me now with this this 
certification, the train, the trainer, did, is that like any type of expertise that they consider you like an expert in this stuff or is, how's that work? I've never used that word in court okay. except for the dog. So oh, I don't yeah, know, like, yeah. cause experts are very it is? That's why, that's touchy why word in the U S mm -hmm. like it's, I've been considered a, a canine expert in court a couple times and I'm, I'm like, I'm not even a, a canine trainer. Like, yeah, I did some shoots on beforehand, you know, but I'm not, I'm not a trainer out there training canines all the time. So I'm very, that word expert, I don't like that word either, really. It's, and obviously it's a word that has a meaning, but if you bring out the thesaurus right now, I'd probably find a word I like better. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got you. With, um, I mean, with the courts in Indiana, even if, say, this company deemed you an expert, the courts have to, you'd, like the, the prosecutor would have to go and prove that you're an expert. Then the judge would have to be like, yes, we, we say he's an expert in this, in this area. Yes, that's what's happened to me in court. And usually it doesn't even get contested because whoever, the defense attorney, they don't even care. Right. They're just like, all right, yeah, we accept it. And the judge accepts it and right, it's right. done. But even I got the, a gang certified professional. I was, I was called for like three years. I had to take a test and everything from the East Coast Gang Investigators Association. So I got that certification and it was called certified gang professional and they wouldn't use the word expert because of legal reasons so they would it sounds so weird instead of being like a gang expert you were a gang sir you know and it had a, a level of criteria you had to meet you had to pass the test which you would think it would be easy and it wasn't it wasn't like hey did a crips wear blue and the and the <laughs> bloods wear red true or false you know like it was it was pretty intense i'm reading stuff i'm like what the fuck is this about like i'm like i don't know this one you know and you had to get a certain amount right and it was very detailed and i was like wow this is, this is it's not your typical law enforcement like hey we know you we, we need to help you along here buddy you know right right what's the uh, the the best or your most favorite spot that you went and taught so far i love absolutely love the great state of texas i, I love it i love every going even down internationally there. like that's still your favorite i mean i'm yeah. not talking about the people i'm just talking about whatever the else made, yeah whatever else made that area great well doing presentations in australia was amazing australia is amazing i'm gonna say in the united states i mean alaska's alaska was really cool dude did you contact those people I did through Jenna, but I don't know. Oh, you got to get on them again. Because, that, <laughs> dude, that legit is one of the coolest places I went. And, like, the cops are real cool around the country. We have this conversation. Because yeah, yeah. I hadn't toured in California yet when I asked you, and you had already gone. And I was like, how are they, bro? <laughs> You're like, they're good. Cops are cops across the board, and, and they, we all deal with very similar shit. The problem is, is, like, the politicians that make it. And, and that's when I start to feel bad for certain areas of the country. So even, not even necessarily states, certain cities within states that are brand as shit. And I still feel like the cops are going to be the cops and they're still going to have a, a very similar mindset as cops cross country. It's just what they can and can't say or what they can and can't do based on the political climate in their area. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things like I ask all the time in classes, are you allowed to curse it here? And like I had one cop from like Oakland, he goes, you'll get days for that. And I'm like, well, how do you ask someone to show your fucking hands without saying the word fuck? Like, I don't understand. You know, like, and then other arts of the country are like, yeah, they don't give a shit down in Arkansas. They're like, yeah, you better not fucking tell someone just to raise their hands. And I'm like, ooh, you got to throw that bucket. You know, like different parts of the country say different things. What's your favorite part? Where's your favorite place you went so far? Favorite part? When it comes to um, the camaraderie and the brotherhood, of cops, I think that my two favorite spots, it used to be New Jersey because across the board from, uh, it seems like from chiefs to troopers to the guy that's six months on the job, there's all this uh, like admiration for each other. Like everyone values each other's opinion and the, the brotherhood, they all stick together. Uh, other parts of the country, I feel like it, it, you can almost see a divide and not necessarily like they're dicks or anything like that, just the brotherhood across the board here it seems but georgia when I, I just taught in georgia and i feel like it's very similar in georgia with that um one of the I'm trying to think of like the the one of my favorite places that i went and stayed just based on like geographical and hmm, when i taught in southern california it was pretty good just because we stayed in long beach and just seeing like that i've never been in the west coast seeing and and the preconceived notion of the West Coast that I had and the people when I was in Long Beach, even the people that we were like I I walked around in the street capture the entire fucking time. No one then neck, no one said a word, no one gave me shit. Like so like I just feel like again, the media is bullshit. Like it the perception is not 
even within, you know, just the normal average civilians over there, like outside the cop world, they still didn't like, I went, I walked down like Hollywood Boulevard in a street cop shirt. Like, 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 like looking at the squares and shit. No one said a fucking word. Like, so, yeah. So I'm like, I was like, I don't know if if it's as bad as, as the fucking media makes it sound. I'm, I know the politicians sound like shit, but does everyone in that state feel that way? I highly doubt it. So just seeing that, never being to California, I think that was cool. And I, and I don't know if I, based on the media, I don't know if I would ever went to California. Honestly, like I had told the wife, I'm like, I don't know if I ever want to spend money in this state. Like just based on the bullshit that the media puts out and the politicians put up, like, I don't, I don't have a desire to go there. But now going there, I would go back. I, I might go to a different area. I went to, um, I went to Fresno too. Fresno was good. There was, you could tell a big difference between Southern California and, and, and up North by Fresno. Like it was, it seemed like there was a lot more poor people, like it, a lot of more poverty, I guess, maybe where you see like a huge, uh, like million dollar homes in Southern California. And then uh, three streets away, you see like homeless people, which is such a weird dynamic. But yeah. I think California would probably just because I've never been and just seeing it was pretty cool. Nice. Nice. All right, man. So we went on another tangent, but uh, I think we've been doing this what, for an hour now. Oh, damn. All right. Well, if you want to, if you want to sell some shit, like maybe sell your, your classes or where people go follow you at Instagram. I don't want to sell myself. I don't want to work the <laughs> poll. Showing girl good body language on Instagram. On top of that, I got the classes unmasking hidden facial expressions. This will be the last year I'm doing that in 2023, 2024. I'm rolling out pre-attack indicator class. And we're still going to have the body language for law enforcement class. Cause I think everything, all the feedback I get from everybody, they're like the most, I get positive feedback from everything, but everybody's really on pre-attack indicators why because it's what allows you to fucking go home at the end of the yeah, night yeah, so absolutely. most important thing at the end of the day cool man well, it was okay. a pleasure yeah. glad that you did this with me you. yeah this, we're, we're supposed to give a hug on camera no now. we're not I'll doing that our hugs there. <laughs> well this guy tell me i'm i don't get hugs everybody else gets hugs when he sees them, i just says, gave you a hug when you walked in we, i'm not we're, you're not leaving right now i gave you the hug oh, this get guy. out of here all right we're done i'm out of here <laughs>